Greetings YouTube. Ninth Circle, back again. This is Bill. Uh, as I record this, it is May 28th, and it is the 32nd anniversary of this fine album right here, Like an Everflowing Stream. So, what does that mean? What that means is that this is the much promised discography slash ranking for Dismember that I've been talking about probably for a couple months. So, finally doing it here. Because it seemed like today's as good a day as any. By the time you see it, it'll probably actually get this will probably get uploaded on Memorial Day. So, but anyway, what are we listening to? Of course, we're listening to the final Dismember album from 2008, untitled, simply called Dismember. Um, really good album. One of the reasons I'll go into, so I'm going to set that there for now, but one of the reasons I wanted to do this ranking and talk about Dismember is, one, they are one of my favorite, probably my favorite death metal band of all time. Um, they've, I mean, they put out albums for... 17 years before. I mean, they're back together. They reunited in 2019. They have not put out any new material. They continue to play live and things like that. But I think they're an underrated band. I mean, uh, most people hail like an ever-flowing stream, but as a, as their, I think their entire catalog is great. They, yeah, they have some albums that are better than others, but I don't think they have any bad albums. Like, there are very few bands in any genre that I can really think of that I could say, oh, they don't have any albums that I don't like, that I think aren't worthy of being discussed. So, with that, I'm going to get into it here. We'll talk about uh, the beginnings of the band. So, they originally were called Dismemberizer. That was the original name of the band, but um, they couldn't fit that name on the cover of the demo, their first demo tape, so they shortened it to Dismember. Uh, they formed in 1988. Um, David Blomqvist was the guitarist. Um, Robert Senebeck was actually the vocalist at the beginning. And Fred Espy was the drummer. Um, they had another member, that I think his name was Tex, who I believe was the bass player, but not the original bass player. So, um... They recorded five demos between 1988 and 1990. Uh, the first one was a rehearsal demo. Then they released a demo that was simply called Blasphemy, in 19, also in 1988. Um, 1989, they had another rehearsal demo. I'm trying to think of, I'm looking at what the other... Or no, Dismembered, that was their first demo in 1988. They had a rehearsal tape, 88. Here, look at my phone for some notes. Dismembered was their first demo, also their second demo from 1988. Last Blasphemies from 89, and then they had Rehearsal Demo 89, and Reborn in Blasphemy 1990. So, as I said, uh, you had those three members that would continue to be in the band. So the band actually broke up at one point, I think in, 80, in 89, and... Fred Espy and David Blomquist joined Carnage with Michael Lamott and Maddie Carkey and the bassist whose name I can't remember, but not somebody that was like a big name player. But And they put out Dark Recollections, which is a great fucking album. Everybody should te check out Carnage Dark Recollections. I've got it, but it's on the shelf over there. I'm not going to go dig it out. It's, it's again, it's dismember related, but it's not a dismember album. But anyway, after Michael Lamott left uh, Carnage to join Carcass. Uh, Fred and David decided to get Dismember back together. They brought Maddie Carkey along with them, and they recorded that Reborn Blasphemy demo in 1990. And then they also added Robert Senebeck came back, but Robert came back as the rhythm guitarist, and they got Richard Cabeza as the bassist. And so in 1991, they released the aforementioned Like an Ever Flowing Stream. Um, a fucking classic goddamn record. So, best, I mean, override of the overture, the first, the first song, 
is to me one of the fucking best death metal songs ever ever written. Amazing fucking song. There's the back. This one I also have on vinyl. This is an OG. I have an OG press of this here. Um, nuclear blast. I'll take the I'll take the record out for one reason only because. It is actually signed by all the members of the band here. You can see God, I'm holding it all crooked and shit. Because it's kind of a weird angle. But uh, yeah, signed by all the members of the band there. So this is the only this is the only like legit piece of this member vinyl I have. But yeah, like I said, Override of the Overture, fucking amazing. You've got Skinner Alive being on here. That's another fucking great goddamn song. Um of course, In Death Sleep. I mean, this one, the CD has bonus tracks, of course. It's got Death Evocation, Torn Apart, Justifiable Homicide, great song. But of course, like, that artwork, that fucking Dan Seagrave artwork is just iconic. You know, one of his earlier pieces, too. So this, like I said, I'm gonna have to say this is my... I'm Big spoiler, I'm going in chronological order, but this is my number one, hands down. I fucking love this album. I think it's one of the greatest metal debuts ever. You know, you can't go wrong. All right, then we'll go to Pieces. This is an EP. It's the only EP I'm going to show. They have other EPs, but this is the only EP I own by them. But Pieces is probably the most important. I mean, amazing cover. You've got the severed the severed heads, their hair bound together. I mean, and it, you know, has, of course, like, the title track, Carnal Tomb, I Wish You Hell soon to be dead this um the song Skinner Alive that was on their first album got them in a lot of trouble in Europe and it was banned in a lot of places and there was an obscenity I think in Germany there was an obscenity trial against them for that song and even I think so but Pieces is a great EP great stopgap EP and like I said the artwork fucking iconic I'm not gonna rank it cause it's not a full length but Incredible. So that ties into this and this. The second album, 1993's Indecent and Obscene, which is a reference to that trial in the Skinner Alive song. Um, this, of course, Skin Father, great fucking song. Um, Reborn in Blasphemy, which is a re recording, Dreaming in Red. Uh, there's a song on here that some of you, if you're, if you know the track listing, ties in a little bit to this channel specifically I, I won't I won't spell it out for you but look look at the track list on this and you'll see I love this album too very brutal continuing like this is kind of the end of the first era of of Dismember the first album pieces in this where it's like just way more aggressive not not very much melody at all but just really amazing thick riffs God, this part this part in Under a Blood Red Sky very Iron Maiden great fucking song Anyway, sorry I digress there, but yeah. This, I would probably rank this, I'm going to probably say this is album, like, number four for me, fourth place for me. I love this album, but there's a couple other ones that I, I prefer over this, actually. So, yeah. Indecent and Obscene, super cool artwork, same t-shirt there, so number four for me. Second album, but my fourth favorite album by them. Okay, then we come to 1995's Massive Killing Capacity. This album, I know, it's kind of controversial in the, uh, I'll show you the back there too, kind of controversial in discography because this sees, this sees them slowing down, getting groovier, mel more melody appears, I mean this, but this has some great fucking songs on it. I Saw Them Die, on Frozen Fields, I love. Uh, Casket Garden. Collection by Blood is probably my favorite song on here. Super punky, drums, and catchy. And then Life, Another Shape of Sorrow. Fucking amazing. But I know a lot of people... This album was kind of considered a sellout album when it came out in 95. Like, they were becoming more accessible. But I think it's a fucking great record. I mean, and that... The fucking mech on the front. How can you not fucking love that? This is actually number three for me. This is probably my third favorite album by them, is Massive Killing Capacity. So, okay. 
Then we get, I've got two copies of this album. This Death Metal, 1997. Why do I have two copies? Well, here's why. One of the reasons. This is a shaped, that's a shaped CD that has the shield on the front there. Which I think is, I don't know, that was kind of a kind of a thing in the late 90s, early 2000s, where Nuclear Blast was doing a bunch of shaped discs. There was one for, I, I think, uh, In Flames had one, maybe for Jester Race or Black Ash Inheritance, where it was shaped like the Jester Head. And there might have been some others, but... Anyway, this album, favorite songs, Misanthropic, with that amazing timpani intro, Killing Compassion... Uh, Silent of the Watchers, I fucking love. Trend Killer. You know, great shit. So, this album number, this would be my second favorite by them. This is a reissue. This one's like, I got this because it has, it has some bonus tracks on it. It has a cover of Pagan Savior by Autopsy. It has a song called Shadowlands. It has another song called After Image and one called Shapeshifter. Most of these are like, um like EP tracks and stuff like that so but anyway got that because this is cool but it, this doesn't play on everything that's cheap disc like on my main stereo because it's so small it won't play but I, this will play I have a boom box and you can play it on it'll work on that so it is playable but just not on everything you can really notice how like the color separation like this is way brighter than the, the more modern version which is kind of weird but anyway yeah fucking third favorite album by them, Death Metal, 1997. All right. Then, so this sees a, the kind of like the first major lineup departure um, at this point from since the full lengths have started. You, uh, Richard Cabeza is not on this. They get Charlie D'Angelo playing bass uh, from Arch Enemy. He's actually the... And this album, I was looking on Metal Archives, and this is like possibly their lowest rated album. I think it's only got a 69%. I don't fucking understand why, because I actually think this album is really goddamn good. Um, the first the first six tracks almost read like like a concept, like a Suicidal Revelations, Questionable Ethics, Beyond Good and Evil, Retaliate, Enslaved to Bitterness, and Mental an or Mutual Animosity. It's, like, it's almost like it tells a story of you know, like, personal, you know, personal pain and, like, finding out you've been stabbed in the back by people. Um, the, my favorite song on this, though, is Patrol 17, which is, like, the most melodic song on here, hands down. But that song's about, um, it's a World War II song about a Finnish sniper picking off this Nazi patrol one by one. And it has, like, an awesome line in it about how, like, won't be able to find their bones until the springtime because they'll be, you know, buried under snow. Really good fucking album. I mean, it's, again, it's really melodic. I mean, it has the shittiest artwork of any Dismember album. This is the one Dismember album that I think has crappy artwork. I think all of their other albums are great, have great artwork, but not this one. This looks, it's kind of indicative of its time. This came out in 2000. And, you know, in, in, in that, at that time, like, there was so much Photoshop a lot of album covers look like fucking shitty video game artwork, and this this is no different. But this would probably be, I don't know, I'd probably say this is like album number number five. This would probably be fifth or fifth place for me, or or maybe yeah, maybe fifth place for me. I really like this album a lot. I think it's underrated. Okay, then we get into 2004s where Iron Crosses Grow. So, this also... We, uh... We have different, again, different members. Cabeza's still out at this point. I think he was going to be on this record, but he was living in the U.S. at the time. His wife was pregnant. They were going to move back to Sweden, but they couldn't. They, like, immigration wouldn't let them move back, so he... They had to have a, you know, they didn't... I don't think they ended up having a bassist on this. I think this was basically just recorded by... Um, Longquist, Senebeck, Karki, and Espy. I think, I think um, Robert and David shared bass duties on this. So, this is actually my least favorite Dismember album. Um, I mean, it's no, again, it's not bad. It's a good record, but I, I 
it doesn't have as many songs as I like. I mean, the ones that stand out to me the most probably are Where Angels Fear to Tread and, like, Children of the Cross. Uh, Tragedy of the Faithful is pretty good, but there's other ones that are kind of just, that I, that I feel like are just kind of, like, okay, you know? Really cool artwork. Again, you got Dan Seagrave back doing artwork. And it's that's good. There's the inside. There's the inside of it there. But my least favorite of them all. Not a bad record at all. But that's 2004. Anyway, 2006. We get this album, which is an, I think an amazing album too. This is where this is uh, the God that never was. And this is also the interesting thing about this album is we get a different guitarist. Senebeck is not on this. This is also the last album that has Fred Espy on it as well. Um, this has the title track is awesome. The um, time heals nothing is really good. Phantoms, Phantoms of the Oath, I love. Um, Feel the darkness, my absolute favorite song though is the last song, Where No Ghost Is Holy. Fucking hell, man! That that song, the melodies in it are just incredible. Great lyrics on this too. Really kind of leaning into the whole anti-Christian themes heavily. God damn, can't fucking go wrong with this album. Like, incredible, incredible record. Great artwork, too. And then, that takes us to the album I showed, 2008's Untitled Dismember. So, this one, like I said, Fred Espy is not on it. Um, Robert Senebeck is not on it. They have a fill-in, they have different guitarists, bass, and drummer. So the only two longtime members in it are David Blomquist and Matty Carkey, but... It's still a fucking great record, man. Like like I said, the song Under a Blood Red Sky, um, this song, Tide of Blood, great fucking No Honor and Death, Black Sun, just great fucking songs overall. Like, if they, if, you know, Inside, doesn't, there's not really a whole lot to show there. If they never record anything else again, this is a great fucking note to go out on. I mean, you know, so... That would probably be, I don't know, I'm kind of, the ranking part, this would probably be, I would rank this probably, this would be more so than where Iron Crosses go, but not as high as, uh, not as high as the God that never was. So second from the bottom, but all great albums. So, um, I was supposed to see them last year at Maryland Death Fest, they were supposed to be playing, and they canceled because not all the members were vaccinated and they couldn't get into the U.S., so I was bummed, but... What are you going to do? I'm hoping at some point I will still get to see Dismember before they somebody in the band dies or calls it quits, you know. And I wouldn't, I don't know, and I'd be cautiously, I'm not usually a big fan of bands reuniting and putting out new records, because a lot of times it's just a cash grab, their hearts aren't in it. I mean, like, I feel like the At The Gate shit post-reunion has not been very good. The Carcass stuff's been decent, but most bands... They lose the plot, typically. They broke up for a reason. But I, I kind of would almost like to hear a, another Dismember record, because, like, again, I feel like they're really underrated. Very few people ever cite them as, like, they're the best death metal band or anything like that. But I really do think they have a pretty much flawless catalog, and you should buy you should buy all their shit. You should listen to all their shit. They're worthy of it. They're worthy of your fucking time. So, anyway... Enough gushing about Dismember. Happy 32nd anniversary to Like an Ever Flowing Stream. A um, couple more videos coming up. I've got... I'm going to have a video that's like VCLT from Scott from No Solution. Plus, I went to a local record store and bought some stuff over the this past weekend. And then I got, uh, there'll be more collection stuff coming. So, that's what's coming up. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I'll see you in the Ninth Circle.